Well, welcome everybody and aloha kaka hiaka, which is the Hawaiian word for good morning. Uh, it's 10 o'clock. Uh, it's 9.55 here right now in Hawaii time. And if you're watching this pre-recorded, in other words, if this is not 9.55 a.m. Hawaii time on January 8th, 2021, you could uh, fast forward about five minutes where the real show starts. This is the uh, the warm up uh, period that we're using just to kind of uh, make sure everything's working, make sure the mics are working, do our testing. Uh, the real show is going to start in a few minutes, but uh, I'd love to have you all a part of it and uh, be here with us. And actually, I'm really glad that you're here with us. And I am here with my good friends. Uh, we've got uh, Scott Startsman, who's on Oahu uh, with the, that's not a fake background behind him, by the way, he's really living there. And we have uh, Dylan Nonaka, who's living on the big island, uh, is with us. And we have Heidi Dollinger, who is with us on Maui. So we have a great uh, statewide uh, representation. And uh, God bless you, Jim, the first guy on the show, as always. Uh, bless you, Jim, and great to see you. Uh, and uh, uh, hello there, Ian. And Raul's with us. And Teresa is here. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Teresa, great to see you all here. Hey, listen, let's go around the, let's go around the, the show over here and see what everyone's doing. Uh, typically what we do is we warm up with the Aloha shirt review. So Scott, what's, uh, what's, what's, what's the Aloha shirt today? Uh, actually, Rin Spooner as usual. I'm always consistent with the Rin Spooners. In fact, I don't, I think I own one other Aloha shirt that's not a Rin Spooner, but this is, um, we effectively, this is a Hermosa Saloon 25 years replica or memorabilia we um my, my family's bar and restaurant in um hermosa beach california we sold it a couple of years ago but this was kind of the work the work uniform uh, i'll never forget the the only time i actually had been in there i'd stopped over from miami i had gone to the orange bowl in miami stopped over went in there at 10 at night for one drink and everyone kind of figured out you know i was related to the owners and whatnot and i didn't make it out of there till like two three in the morning and ended up having to get on a flight at 6 a.m it wasn't wasn't pretty so I wear this shirt with a little bit of a, uh, you know, it brings back some bad memories a little bit. <laughs> bad me well, they, they were good until they became bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, Dylan, uh, what's going on there over there, buddy? What's the what's the shirt of the day and what's going on? Well, I'm, I'm consistent with the Sig Zines, which is the local Big Island designer. And uh, actually, now he's, he's, he's not uh, little and local anymore. If you look like on the uh, all of the Hawaiian Airlines uh, uniforms are Sig Zane designs and the uh, the airplanes have them on there too. So I think Hawaiian Electric also uses his uh, designs as part of their logo and stuff. So he's pretty big time now in the, in the state, but um, so still still trying to support the local Big Island designers. So Zig Zane is out of the Big Island? Hilo. Yeah, they, they started Hilo. They started in Hilo. Yep. Wow. And still, and still, it's the only, uh, I think they may have a retail store in um all of Moana now but they still have their little tiny retail store in downtown Hilo where they started awesome hey Dylan I'm not sure check your settings I mean you're coming across fine there's a little bit of an echo and I don't know if if your primary mic is is the one that's being used or if it's the mic that's on the laptop I'm not sure you may want to just gonna quick check on that you sound fine uh just want to make sure it's not your uh using the right mic. Heidi, Heidi and I have our coffee. Uh, we have our, our, our coffee connoisseur in, in common, or I, I call myself a coffee snob. Uh, Heidi's a coffee aficionado. Uh, Heidi, what is the coffee of the day today that you are drinking? And make sure you unmute yourself before you start. There you so go. the coffee I'm drinking today is a Maui coffee. It's one of my favorites, the red katuai. Um, they call it the Cabernet of coffee. So it's really great. It's one of my go-tos. And I'm wearing my puka shell earrings. One of my friends during COVID started making this great jewelry from shells on the beach. Um, so anyway, feel very lucky, grateful to be here. Aloha. Aloha, isn't that the truth? So now puka shell. So we should kind of explain that a little bit to everybody. What is a, what is a puka shell? I know, we, I know we can't do a zoom in right now on, on Heidi's ear, but um, what is the what is the puka what is the puka shell? What does that mean? What does that, that represent? I see it. I see like that little white thing, that little white round thing. Is that the puka shell? Yeah. So what is a puka shell? Yeah. So the she found these shells on the beach. Um and I don't I don't really have much of a story, but maybe somebody else does. <laughs> well, I just know that puka is the Hawaiian word for hole. 
So a puka shell is a shell with a hole in it. And it looks like those shells have holes in it. So they're naturally, they have natural holes. And they were like a big, they were the rage. My wife tells me when she was young uh, and they used to walk up and down on the beach. And the big thing was to collect puka shells. And they would make puka shell necklaces uh, and sell them at the international marketplace in Waikiki. Um, I don't know if anybody else wants to add into that. It's it's 10 to 1. Dylan, you want to do a quick uh, mic check just to make sure uh, if, uh, I don't know if it's the same mic or are we good? How's that? Any better? Yeah, that is better. That okay, is better. right on. There's less echo. Echo. Terrific. All right. Great. Okay, folks. It is it is that time. Uh, it is time. It is show time uh, to begin. I'm glad that you're all here with us today on this uh, Aloha Friday morning. And you know, I uh, today is January 8th, 2021. Happy New Year, everybody. And I have a little bit of a, I wanted to start, you know, before the show started, and this just came up a minute, really a few minutes before the show started. I wanted to kind of start and and only this time with a personal message. And, and that's and that's this. And you know, folks, uh, I don't want to talk about anything that's been going on in the past week. And what I want to talk about is this, is for this show, for right now, for this moment, we are going to focus on the now. I don't know, and I don't, I do know, but I don't care about what's going on in the world around us. I don't care. This is our little sanctuary right now that we're all going to have. We're going to have a fun time with a with we have Hawaii to talk about the most beautiful sacred place on earth this attitude of gratitude is one of the big things that we all here practice in Hawaii because we are so happy to be here we're so glad to be living on this what we consider is the greatest place on earth and so my last bullet point here says savor the moment and what i mean by savor the moment is we're not going to worry about what happened yesterday I'm not going to think about what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm just going to think about what's happening right now. And I'm going to have a good time with my friends talking about the place that we love and a good time with you. So I want you all to savor this moment with us and have a great time. And let's just have a good time together for now. Can't promise you what's going to happen afterwards. And I don't care. I just care about the right now. And so that's it. I just wanted to share that with all, with, with all of you. And um, that's basically it. So let's move on. Okay, let's get into the show here. So we've got our, let's start with our normal thing that we begin with. And we got a, a, a news update here. Just want to give you a quick, quick thing on the news. So what's going on? Well, uh, the COVID, uh, if you look at this graph, I don't know if it's easy to see or not, but if you look at the graph, there is a spike and I think it's expected. Uh, the spikes are the result of the holidays, uh, this, you know, Christmas, New Year holidays, people got together. Uh, the thing is, is, is spiking. I think it's spiking across the country, if not the world. And it is what it is. I'm not going to worry. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, Kauai is, uh, have announced they are doing some, they've changed, they made some changes. So planning is key. It's super important that you do the right kind of planning. If you're going to take a trip to Hawaii, uh, and, and make your, your travel plans carefully. Kauai is allowing, I'll, I'll just read off of the press release here, travelers flying to Kauai from Oahu, Maui County, or the Big Island of Hawaii, uh, who have been in the state of Hawaii for more than 72 hours before departing for Kauai can avoid quarantine by taking the following steps. Travelers from out of state now have the option of a shortened three-day quarantine by participating in the resort uh, bubble post-travel program. Uh, so what they're saying is this, is that if you follow the safe, you have to follow the safe travels program. If you've been in the state for at least 72 hours, if you're um, uh, on this, the safe travel program, which we've talked about in previous shows, you can go to Hawaii, uh, Kauai and avoid quarantine. If you fly directly into Kauai, you have a, uh, you can have a shortened three day quarantine by uh, participating in the resort bubble post test. Uh, program, which means essentially you go to a resort, uh, an authorized resort, a bubble resort, you go through testing and you have a limited three-day quarantine. So Kauai is changing things around. So if you're going to go to Kauai, you want to kind of plan that appropriately. Another piece of the news I think we're going to start adding is because it's always happening. Now we have a, a reactivated, uh, a live erupting volcano. Uh, so the Kilauea uh, volcano I'll read something and I'll pass it over to Dylan because I know he's our big on resident and he may have something to add to this. Uh, the U.S. Geological Survey says uh, the eruption from the west vent in Hale Ma'u Ma'u crater continues at Kilauea summit. Spatter being ejected from the vent has built another spatter cone while lava entering the lava lake is still forming a dome mountain. The lava lake continues slowly to rise. As of January 6th, the lava lake was at 636 feet deep. That's 
a lot of lava. Uh, scientists continued to monitor the eruption and the park that, uh, of in an area of the park that remains closed to the public for safety reasons. Dylan, do you want to have give us any kind of a quick update? Uh, what you want to add to that on the volcano on the Big Island? What's going on with that? I mean, that was a good summary, but I guess the the update I would give is that they're really, I mean, everybody's over it. <laughs> there was like a week of, there was like a week of like excitement and people talking about it. And now it's just, we're back to normal. Like it used to be for 30 years. So um, the, the VOG is definitely in the air. I know we did a whole show on this a couple of weeks ago, but um, that's the real only thing that kind of brings it top of mind. And you notice it every day is that there is um, that haze in the air again. And the sunsets, you can't really see the, the horizon when the sun sets on most days, there was a couple of clear days last weekend um, when the wind shifts, but for the most part, the fog is back. And I guess the upside is you get these really beautiful red sunsets. Now when the sun sets, it's a really different color because of uh, that volcanic haze in the air. So what I'm kind of hearing you say, Dylan, is that things are essentially back to quote normal the way they've been for the last 30 years, you guys, <laughs> right? It was in the paper, people talked about it. And then now it's like, you know, it's, it, everybody's over it, so. Because there was like a little bit of a break. I don't know how long the break was, was for like a couple of years, I think, right? It was, year? Yeah, it was like uh, September of 2018 until what, November of, or December of 2020. So about okay. a little over two years. So I guess a little bit of a break, but now it's kind of back to quote normal, which means yep. that you have like a, a hazy, voggy conditions on the Kona side of the island. If the winds are, if the trade winds are kind of at their norm, you've got the volcano that's kind of going on, et cetera. That's great. Um, hey, everyone, just want to uh, welcome you all again. And if you've got any questions or comments, I'd uh, love to hear about them. And uh, hey, Josh, I see your message. Josh, we got a, we, Josh submitted a phenomenal question, which we're going to have in a, in a few minutes after we talk about our market update. And we're going to go into that. So Josh, gotcha, gotcha, buddy. Glad you're here. Uh, for all of you that are here, uh, we take your questions first. Your questions are the priority because you're here with us now. You're here with us live. We have a whole bunch of questions queued up that people have submitted, and we're going to go through them one by one. Uh, but your questions and your comments come first. So uh, next part of what we normally do in the show is we do a little bit of a, a quick market update. So let's do that. Uh, I just kind of want to hear from all of you across the state, uh, Scott and Dylan and Heidi. Um, Fill me in on kind of what's been happening. The last time we had a show was, I believe, uh, the 14th, if I'm not mistaken, uh, something like that. It was a while ago, or maybe the 18th. Can't remember, but it was a while ago. It was a couple of weeks ago, at least. Um, and so I uh, want to get some update on what's new, what's going on in the market that is notable uh, that we want to talk about. So, Scott, why don't we start with you? Yeah, there's actually uh, quite a few things. I mean, obviously, we ended the year. We got a new year coming uh, now, but there's some really interesting things going on and some trends that I'm seeing. So closed sales for the, for the year last year ended up and sales price was up 5.2%. But I'd say that's, a, for, that's for the year. But I'd say it's a little misleading because we're trending more on the upper side of that the last couple of months. Uh, the big thing to me is we're at 1.4 months of inventory remaining. So what does that mean? That's ex extremely restricted. We're actually back at the same inventory levels as we were in 2007, which was the height of the last market. Uh, at that time, we had 20% price appreciation. I don't see us having that this time because you're, you're looking at very different economic conditions. But I do think this year, if that trend continues, which it should, we should be price rot price wise and appreciation we probably should be closer to 10 percent by the end of this year um and the list of sales price ratio is 100 percent right now so people sellers are getting what they're asking it's a very tight market and i'll give you an, a, a good example um i put in a an offer in a property in kaneohe listed at a million fifty there were 19 offers um we were in the top two uh, however, we went 185,000 over asking escalation clause and appraisal contingency removal, and we did not get it. Um, so, you know, that every single offer I've written, the last 10 that I've written have been competing with multiple offers. And what I would, um, the good news is, is the new listings that are coming on the market last month, we, they're 15% they're more new listings coming on the market than the same time last year. So there are more sellers coming on, but there's still, uh, way more buyers in the market than there are sellers. And the one trend that I'm seeing consistently is like my Kahala listing, for example, I've had 15 people looking from that San Francisco, Silicon Valley area. 
And normally those people are more going to the outer islands because they want the quiet resorts. They want to get out of, you know, the hustle and bustle. But what they're looking at doing now is moving here to have the city life work remotely, have the, the better schools for the children are here. And we're seeing a big migration from people from the mainland looking to move to Oahu where they can work remotely and live. Um, that that's probably pretty important to know what I would tell people with this pricing, what's going on. I had somebody tell me, Hey, I don't want to overpay for a property. Well, the reason there's so much, um, so many people in, or, or so much bidding going on is because when those interest rates dropped, it created affordability in the housing. The only way you offset that is either interest rates go back up or prices have to go up. And that's what we're seeing. And the feds already said, they're not looking at raising interest rates for three years. That's a vehicle that they use to stimulate the economy. They want people to borrow at cheaper rates to, to spend and get the economy going. So I don't see this trend. This trend is gonna continue. And because the capital has, begot has gotten so affordable because rates are so low, I see us continuing this trend going forward. So. I would I would question that person that says I don't want to overpay because if you're you're classifying as overpaying you're overpaying in today's snapshot maybe you're you're paying a premium price but what is that value going to be in two years you actually are probably paying a discount now for what it's going to be in the future if this trend continues. Oh, that's an amazing summary, Scott. If I had to, uh, I mean, that's an amazing detail. If I had to summarize that, it means we think prices are going to go up significantly on Oahu in the short term, and it's really, really hard to buy a house right now. There's a lot of competition for those buys. Um, so, uh, Dylan, what's what's that's really remarkable. Again, Dylan, what's going on on the Big Island? Uh, Unmute your microphone. On on the Big Island, the the things are still bananas. They were, you know, they, we had a couple of slow <laughs> months there. <laughs> uh, in the summertime, things slowed down. And then we saw it pick up in September, October, November. We were talking about off the chart, 60% increases in the number of properties that were selling versus a year ago. And then in December, just in the Kona market, my primary market, but it's a really big indicator of, of where we're going because this is where the second, that second home market, right? And it doesn't make any sense that in December, we had a 100% increase. It, it was 97% in the number of homes that sold in December this year versus December a year ago. Some of that has to do with the Ironman, uh, which is weird, right? So the Ironman comes every October and people avoid Kona like the plague in, in October because uh, there's thousands of people here in Speedos running around, clogging up the roads and every single hotel room and Airbnb is booked. So normally December for closed sales is a, is a slow month because not that many uh, properties go under contract in, in October, right? So you have that 45, 60 day lag, but there was no Ironman this year and people started coming back and uh, that, you know, buy-in frenzy has continued. So across the whole island, there was like 30% increases uh, for land condos and and homes. So across the board, um, huge increases towards the end of the year. Excuse which me, pretty Dylan, much, when you say 30% increase, you mean 30% increase in number price? of homes? No, no, number no. Of price, homes. Price, 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 were up, price were up like 7%. So 7%. Price, I mean, still pretty strong, stronger than normal, but it's just the sheer volume of how many properties are selling, which is which is crazy because it's not like a small increase. I mean, it's like literally, you know, significant 30, 40, 50% increases in the different markets across the island. So uh, things are back. Things are humming right along. And uh, like Scott said, I don't think there's going to be any slowdown anytime soon. We're definitely not feeling that. And just a little anecdote, right? Talk People talking about, well, I don't want to overpay. I sold uh, a classmate of mine a house about two years ago in a, in a, in a small new build neighborhood that seemed kind of like a stretch. It was kind of high. He paid like 560 for it. And, um, you know, at the time, even in 2018, people were thinking the market was hot and they were overpaid. And he's thinking about selling. I just ran comps for him and we could easily get 700 for that house today. So, I mean, he's going to make oh 140,000 in equity in two years. So um, don't get left behind because that could definitely be the case two years from now again. You know, I'm not a lawyer here, but I think we need to kind of, I need to, I feel the need to throw out a disclaimer. Your actual results will vary. This is not it's a correct. promise, right? <laughs> uh, this is not a promise of any future value. Uh, don't take our word for it. Do your own research. Uh, we're just kind of talking and sharing information based on, mm -hmm. based on what we, we think. Um, and uh, 
<laughs> anyway, but Dylan, that's again. So I'm I'm hearing the this bananas. You're up 97 percent over the previous year in December. What I heard you say, uh, prices are coming up. Uh, the things are up like all over the place. It's a it is a it is a bananas market going on. Our, our biggest problem, and we've talked about this before, and this is if you're in the market in general right now, is just be patient because of this these huge increases. We don't have in the real estate industry. I don't know if I've, I've you know, told you guys this before, but there is only one surplus in bodies in the real estate industry. That's realtors. There's plenty. Of, there's way too many realtors, right? But there's the market is right for escrow companies, lenders, termite companies, home inspectors. And when you have a humongous increase in the number of volume, all of those people are booked. I mean, they're just drowning right now. So I'm having like zero deals close on time right now because somebody along the way is causing a delay. It's nobody's fault. It's not intentional. It's just... Uh, everybody's overwhelmed. They don't have enough staff and everybody's trying to do their best working weekends late. I mean, I'm getting emails from escrow officers at 10 o'clock at night trying to get deals closed because they are just so overwhelmed with volume right now. So if you're looking to buy, be patient and don't make hard plans and you got to be here and on a certain date because you got to expect a one, two, three week delay potentially. Yeah, that's a that's a great insight. Thank you, Dylan. Uh, it's kind of fun. We have a little bit of a side conversation going on on the on the Facebook page over here. Uh, uh, Daniel uh, talked about what to be aware of when buying a leasehold apartment, and uh, and Edlin is like, "Don't do it," <laughs> uh, and uh, never buy leasehold. Now, these are individual conversations between you between yourselves. Again, it's not our recommendation one way or another, but I just want to recognize there's some conversations going on about there. We might get to leasehold conversation if we get to the part of the show we've had it before, but it, it comes up again and again. Heidi, give us the Maui update. What's been going on on Maui the past uh, two or three weeks? It has been busy here on Maui. It's been a great start to 2021. Um, just judging by the number of calls I received on New Year's Day, January 1st, it seems like people have this renewed resolve to do something this year. It's a new year, 2021. Um, now, Maui is the only county that has not completed their December 2020 stats. Um, so I think the entire state's waiting for Maui. Um, but there is just a lot going under contract in our market, and especially the luxury high-end market is moving. Um, now, in looking what's happened in the recent past, I mean, our number of condo sales is still off compared to previous years. Um, if you're getting beaten out because of multiple offers over on Oahu, um, come over to Maui. That situation is not quite as common here. Um, while we do have a really strong market, I mean, we're definitely not seeing 14, 15 offers on a home um, at this point. It's just a little bit, little bit sm slower moving over here, um, but really strong market. It's going to be a great year. Thank you, Heidi. I really appreciate that. So the moral of the story is uh, plan ahead. Uh, you want to get a hold of Scott or Dylan or Heidi or myself. There's a link on the description. You can click yourself through, get to a form, and uh, we'll get the process started for you right away. Hey, uh, uh, Janice, oh, I hope I didn't pronounce that incorrectly. Janice, Janice Cooper says, Aloha, I'd love to hear about where each of you lives, your specific town area, why you chose it and why you like this, like it. Janice, we're going to get to that question, but I'm going to get to um, a, a great question that we had from uh, Josh, uh, who submitted it earlier. And uh, Josh, I told Josh that if, if he was going to show, you know, Josh, uh, he put in, in the form, he submitted this, in, gave incredible detail and said, Josh, if you're going to be at the show, I'll have a slide ready for you. And I do. So we're gonna we're gonna go into uh, we're gonna go into Josh's slide in a moment here. Uh, nope, not exact uh, technical difficulties here. There we go. So here is uh, here is Josh's uh, Josh's question, and Josh says, and Josh, I've I've uh, tried to minimize it a little bit, but here here we go. So Josh says, my wife and I are currently in the process of paying off our primary home. We will have it paid off in four years by the time we are both 40, but we're unsure of the best course of action to take afterwards. We have a late model, low mile vehicles that are we are planning to hang on to. We have no debt of any kind besides the house. I, my job of 15 years may soon be converting to work from home permanently, and my wife should find work easily in her dental hygiene field. We have a rental property that's spending about $300 per month, and we're thinking about selling it to get part of our down payment. We could get about 70 or 80K on the sale. The main question is your opinion on what we should do with our current primary home. We could rent it out. 
which would take in about 15 to 1800 per month of income, or we could sell it, which would net about 280 to 300,000. If we sold it, we would use the bulk of it to put forth a larger down payment, pay for our moving expenses, and add to our current savings. We got a credit score of about 835. We're looking for a home, not a condo. We don't blow money on nightlife, but we do enjoy eating out a couple of times a week. We enjoy traveling and understand that even if we have additional money to travel, uh, naturally we're going to travel less because, well, we're living in Hawaii. Uh, two curveballs, we'd likely will have another child, and we'd also consider Kailua Kona, especially if we found a property with the potential for additional rental income. Love your resources and appreciate your time. Josh, I uh, appreciate the, the incredible detail of the question. I had emailed this out to everyone ahead of time saying, hey, if Josh uh, uh, calls in uh, or, or jumps in, we're going to kind of talk about his question. So uh, what I'd like to do, let, let's start with Dylan first. Dylan, because he talked about Kailua Kona. Uh, what do you, uh, Josh comes to you, send you all this information. What do you say to Josh? So the first thing I would ask is what is the overall goal? Like home wise, property wise, what are you looking for? So we can kind of figure out price range, what you need to be looking at. And then the next step would be when it comes to your investment property and your current primary residence, your income situation. Now, I would definitely talk to a lender because that is the best person that is going to be able to analyze that in detail and then present you with options in terms of financing that best fit what your goal for a property is. So it's kind of hard to say whether you should sell it or you shouldn't sell it. Um, you really want to talk to a lender, get, lay out the whole entire scenario, the different options, and then they can tell you, look, your best option is you need to sell the property and use that money for a down payment. Or they may say, hey, you're good to go with the way the finances are, rent it out. You can use rental income, you know, and which will offset your debt, debt to income ratio and, and may get you qualified for what you want to buy. So really those are the two big factors is kind of figure out what your overall ideal property is so we can narrow down what your price target is going to be and then work your way back with the lender to figure out the best way to achieve that. Thanks Dylan. And Hey Josh, if, uh, why don't you, if you, while we, while we come around the table over here, throw us a, a, a see if you can answer Dylan's question now on the chat and I'll pop it up. In other words, a uh, price range or the kind of home that you're looking for, right Dylan? That's kind of what you asked him. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. If you want to do that, uh, we'll, we'll try to handle that. I, we'll see how this goes, but give that a shot there. Uh, Heidi, what would you say? How would you respond to uh, to, to Josh's uh, details and Josh's question? Well, I think what Dylan said was great. I mean, I definitely start with talking to the mortgage broker. The next thing, too, is, you know, if you're trying to determine whether or not you want to keep your primary home as a rental property, I mean, think about, do you want to be a landlord um, from afar? Is this something that you want to do? And is this home a long-term investment that you want to keep? Um, when I personally relocated to Maui, I turned my primary residence into an investment property. And the first year, my tenants caused about 20 grand in damage. <laughs> so that wasn't great. But after that, it's been a more positive experience. Um, also, I mean, in making that decision, um, I'd have some more questions for you because I don't know the market in your area, when you bought that home, how much it's appreciated. And you also might want to discuss this decision with your CPA too, because if you've had a lot of appreciation on the home um, and it's been your primary residence for the past three years, if you were to sell it in the next two years, um, there would be some tax exemption for you. So, I mean, question for your CPA and, you know, your personal situation. Thank you, Heidi. Uh, Josh has responded by saying uh, 800K would be the, the, the price range he'd be looking for. Uh, so Dylan, kind of you, you could think about that one. Scott, what is your advice uh, to, to Josh as far as uh, his, his question goes? Yeah, so this is this is exactly what we get into in some of our consultations. Normally, I do an upfront consultation and we kind of walk through these scenarios and, and what are the steps. And the first step would be talking with that mortgage broker because we're having to kind of game plan some things. Uh, where where do you what is your qualification is, you know, and, and then when we look at that qualification, we got to take some we got to run some kind of what if scenarios, which are, you know, what's the rent going to be on that property that you're just in? What are your long term goals? You know. My one of my beliefs is always that the more properties you can have, the the better you're going to be wealth wise down the road and things. But that's not necessarily the goal set in mind. Um, 
it may not align with the goals or we can't, you know, we do need to liquidate that to be able to buy here. So we run different scenarios with the lender, then come back to me and we look at those different scenarios and, and then we look at the properties. Where do you want to be? What, what do you get for that price point in those areas? And then you can make the determination of, okay, we may need to sell that to free up more capital so that we can adjust our price point or, or we're going to have to be in a different area or we need to make sacrifices. So it comes with some significant game planning and, and some strategizing. And that, that's what I love. That's, you know, that, that's where I feel like we can move the needle for clients and making, making them money or saving them a mistake significantly moving forward into the future for them. Excellent, Scott. Hey, Dylan, is there anything you want to follow up on, uh, Josh? Since, since he he came back with a with with a quick answer, uh, how would this? Do you have any sense? I guess your advice would still be to go see a lender, but what the, does eight hundred K throw anything else in the picture for you? Well, well, to kind of add on to what Scott was talking about, so so totally awesome advice. And so what you want to look at right now is that we can ballpark numbers, right? For eight, an eight hundred thousand dollar mortgage, if you borrow the whole entire thing at at interest rates where they are now you'd probably be looking at somewhere around a $4,000 a month payment, right? And that's including taxes and insurance. It's The interest rates are so low. And that's one thing to consider right now is you may be better off borrowing more money at, a, at these low interest rates as opposed to cash it out on another in investment and lowering your overall amount that you borrow, right? So if you did cash out and maybe you put $200,000 down on an $800,000 house, now you're mortgage is 600,000, you'd be looking at closer to a $3,000 a month mortgage. So it's all about kind of what your income looks like. Uh, debt, debt to income ratio is a very important factor in the lending process. And if you, if you have no other debt, you should be well qualified, but still a mortgage broker is going to look at what is that ratio because you cannot exceed a certain amount of debt to your income. Your mortgage debt cannot exceed a certain amount um, of your income. And so those are all things you would look at and kind of figure out, you know, what are you most comfortable with? Are you comfortable paying a higher mortgage, but getting that income producing property to send you a check every month? Or are you more comfortable putting, you know, cashing out there and putting that money down and lowering your, your mortgage payment every month? So lots of different factors, but definitely with interest rates being low, a lot of people are choosing, even people who have cash are choosing to borrow because they can make, you know, you can pay 3% or less on your mortgage and then invest that money and make six, seven, 8% in another investment. And it makes more financial sense. So like Scott said, tons of factors here. You got to kind of run them all and see what works best. Excellent. That's great advice. Uh, uh, really good. Uh, and great. I'm so glad to, to have you guys uh, as, as all of a part of this. Um, and I appreciate that. Uh, I, you know, I, as you, if you all were, were talking, it's like, boy, this, this remote, I mean, we thought that this remote worker thing was, was going to have an impact. And clearly it seems that the remote worker, because Josh is basically one of his convictions is he looks like he's going to be a, a remote worker, uh, converting to work from home permanently. And this is kind of Scott, you mentioned this as well going on, on, on Oahu. So I'm sure this is like a, a big, a big trend going on. Um, why don't we do this? How about if we kind of shift this one a little bit? Uh, let, Can yeah, I say go one ahead, thing Sure, sure, sure. Uh, go ahead. I mean, that what what this was or what this is right here is exactly what we do on a regular basis. I had two full hour long consultations with people prior to even coming on the show this morning, do, going through these exact scenarios. This is where we help from, while you're already on the mainland to make that transition smoother over here. And there's not a lot, this is a fairly technical uh, analysis here on this situation. And there's a lot of money involved. And there's, there, I would say there's not many realtors that can guide, properly guide people through those scenarios. There's a lot of new people and people that don't, you know, fully grasp what to do. This is exactly what we do. Put, put, you know, contact one of us if they want, and we're, we're happy to help them out. We're happy to walk through this. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, and I'm, I think everybody kind of sees that uh, who's watching the, the show, especially those who have been with us week after week after week. Uh, it's it's really a great thing. There is a link on the description. Uh, click on that and fill out the form, and uh, it's going to get right to either Scott or Heidi or Dylan, depending on where you want to uh, where you want to go. Um, and uh, a really quick, uh, uh, Jim uh, Stevenson said, "Hey, are the delays Dylan spoke of statewide and especially Oahu?" Uh, quick nod to that, uh, uh, Scott. The delays that Dylan talked about. Do to you know, the, the the scarcity of resources. Same thing on Oahu. Is there like delays in the closing process? Uh, yes and no. We have more resources here being a full-blown city and over a million people. But the the one where I'm having the issues is appraisers. And appraisers, when, when we put that request up to the third party, 
uh, appraiser's bid to get the appraisal and whoever gets has the lowest bid gets the appraisal. They have a deadline that they're supposed to get that appraisal turned around in. It's two, three weeks. And we're seeing them just blow past that deadline and there's no consequence. So I already know some of the issues and I'm going to be running into it is calling that third party company and going, hey, we're not paying full pop for that thing. They're not delivering within the time frame that they're supposed to. So that's some of the challenges we're starting to run into. It's more, more on the um, appraisers and surveyors. Most of the um, lenders and I would say escrow companies over here and, and termite people are, we, we've got enough. It's, it's the appraisal side. Heidi, how, how about Maui? Well, I mean, one of the things I do with working with the buyer or a seller evaluating offers is I try to look at the details of the offer and set it up for success. And sometimes you receive an offer that's a 45 day close and you just know, you know, look, this is very unlikely it's going to close in 45 days. Let's just agree to 60 days or something. So, um, Anyway, for the most part, deals have been closing on time, um, but it just depends on the type of contingency and the deals. And, you know, I think it's it's important to set yourself up for success and just understand when you are dealing with appraisers and a lot of different inspections. I mean, it can take some time. It's it's not unusual to have a 60 day closing here. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Heidi. And again, this goes back to speaking about experience, right? If you're an experienced realtor, you know what's going on with the market. You can kind of judge it correctly and say, hey, no way we're, are we going to have a 45-day close. You better kind of expect on a 60-day close or or longer. Uh, so yeah, you know, a lot of things you take for granted, right? Uh, it's not until things go wrong that you realize how how much you really rely on expertise and experience to get things done. Uh, really quick question, Dylan, uh, how's the VOG on the, uh, Ian says, how's the VOG on the Kona site? Hoping to visit from New York in a few weeks. My quick answer is, it like like it's always been for the past 30 years dylan uh what what can you add to that about the vog on on the kona side yeah um, i mean it's it's like it was pretty much for 30 years and, and it was it got worse in 2018 when the lava flow happened so if you were here in that six month period when the lava was raging it was really bad but that was kind of an outlier it was pretty consistent for the previous 30 years and it's just like it was back then those back to the way it always was. All right, great. So I want to. Um, what I want to do now is I really want to uh, recognize. I give a, a shout out to to Janice who gave us this question because Janice, you submitted this question uh, on the form, and like I, I have an auto response now that tells people I'm going to have your slide ready. So if you do submit a question on the form, chances are, unless you do it like the day before the show, chances are I'm going to have a, a your question will be on a slide, and if you're here, you want to bring that up, and I'll. I, I can't remember every single person about every single question, but I but I do remember this one. And so I, I am gonna pop this one up and we're gonna talk about it. So this is from this is from Janice. And I think it's a great topic. It's actually gonna be a, another fun topic in keeping with today's fun theme, which is uh, this is from Janice and she's from Pennsylvania. And she says, which town did each of you choose to live on your island and why? So this is like a bragging rights. Uh, yeah, you got it, Janice. Uh, we we got you covered. You we got you. Mahalo. <laughs> Absolutely, we got you covered. So this is a fun one. Um, and uh, so why don't we let's do this? Let's kind of shake it up a little bit. Let's let's start in in reverse order, starting from the bottom up. So Heidi, uh, which town do you live in on your island, and why did you pick that town? So I live in West Maui. The neighborhood I live in is Honokwai, which is just north of Kanapali. I love living here because of the incredible, incredible weather. Um, lots of sunny days, but just a little bit cooler, a little bit more breeze than being um, right downtown in Lahaina, which is about five minutes away. Um, I also live right across the street from the beach. I can see the ocean um, and just close to a lot of great beaches. So I love it here, man. That's a that's a tough one, to, tough one to beat. Uh, Dylan, uh, what's the town that you then? Why did you pick it, and why? So I, I currently live in Kialakekua, and it's South Kona. Uh, there's a lot of little towns, you know, little farming towns. There's Honalo and and Kainaliu, and there's Kialakekua. There's Captain Cook, and so. Um, it's called it kind of all of the same area. It's just a little ahupuas that break it all up. But I live up here basically. I was born and raised here. And um, after leaving, going to the mainland, being in the military, living on the east side of the island, lived in Oahu for a little while, um, there was nowhere else I would rather kind of set roots down in and raise my family in. So that's the cool thing about living here is I'm very close to 
um, all of my family, my wife's family, and my kids are kind of growing up in the pretty much the same environment. You know, just they have the internet now and 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 technology. But I mean, very close to the same environment I grew up in, and it's it's a uh, the perfect mix, I think, of having everything, all the amenities you need of modern life. You know, you have Costco that's thirty minutes away, and and Walmart and Target and all that stuff. But where I live in a little bit, it's 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 about ten miles, twelve miles south of that. You know, it's still kind of that country feel where it's a lot of coffee farms and there's not a whole lot of new stuff. I mean, the stuff that was here 30 years ago is the same stuff. We got a couple of more stoplights, but there aren't, there wasn't a lot of changes um, to this, this kind of South Kona area. So it's the perfect elevation. You know, it's like, it's like a thousand feet to 1500 feet where you don't need any air conditioning. It's cool all the time and uh, just small community. You know, everybody knows everybody and uh, there's nowhere else I'd rather live. Definitely. Awesome, man. Love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, Scott, you live on Oahu. What town uh, and, and district do you live on on Oahu? And well, I'm going to give a quick answer as to why. Just looking behind you, but I want you to kind of flesh out the details here. Uh, yeah, I, I live at the base of the iconic Diamond Head, which is right behind me right here. And um, actually, I think this week is my 20th anniversary for living in this, this spot in this building. I've owned multiple units in this building, but and I'm, I'm on the back side. But um. I absolutely love it. My personal life revolves completely around this around the spot. I walk out my door and I can do a run around Diamond Head and it's four miles door to door. Um, 300 acre Kapiolani Park is right down here, the Waikiki Shell. I'm I'm removed from the herb, you know, the Waikiki, the hustle and bustle. So I'm in more of a, an established neighborhood, mature neighborhood with a lot of growth trees and 300 acre Kapiolani Park. And I work out down there all the time. I swim down at come on a beach, but yet I can either walk or five minute Uber ride or jump on a beaky bike and ride into Waikiki and, and get the best of both worlds. But I do like to be a little removed. I, I don't prefer to be in the hustle and bustle. And I, and I like being on Oahu because I can work hard and play hard at the same time. My, my other favorite place though, is where I lived before, which is Puaco on the big Island, which is the complete opposite of here. Very relaxed, quiet, not a whole lot going on, but, um, I'm, I'm in the heart of everything, but removed enough. So it's quiet and peaceful and has has a nice feel. And I have got 13 restaurants right here on Montserrat Avenue that are have become pretty iconic. It's, you know, it's a boutique little strip and I can walk out my door. I, a lot of times I call the restaurants, they know me by name now. And hey, let me make my takeout order. I just walk across, pick it up and it's super convenient and easy. That's a great overview. I absolutely love it. So uh, my turn. Um, I have um, uh, I live in East Honolulu, which is near uh, the iconic Hanauma Bay. Hanauma Bay is one of the uh, the biggest uh, tourist attractions on Oahu. Uh, we live in that district. Have been living here for over twenty years. Absolutely, as you can, it's the same theme that we all say is we absolutely love it. And I absolutely love uh, living in this area. It's uh, it's so it's considered a suburb of Honolulu. Uh, I love it because uh, we're really close to the beach. In fact, my um, the latest thing I've gotten back into again, when my kids were little, we live a walking distance from the beach. When my kids were little, I used to take them to the beach. We used to kind of swim around. Uh, and I've kind of re recently rediscovered this. It's become my my workout swim. It's about, I swim out um, about a third of, it's a two thirds of a two thirds of a mile swim, basically there and back. I swim out to the outer, not the outer reef, but I swim out to the reef and then I swim back. It's a great phenomenal swim and I could walk there back and forth from my house. I love that. Uh, my favorite place on the planet earth is Makapu'u beach. And I'm about a 15 minute, 10 to 15 minute drive from Makapu'u beach is where I go body surfing, uh, on the weekends. A lot of the videos that you've seen on my channel are uh, me driving back and forth from Makapu'u to go body surfing. So I absolutely love living in East Honolulu. Uh, you got access to shopping. It's quiet. Uh, it's suburban type of living. Um, it's, uh, it's flat. So there's no mountain to go back and forth. We chose that specifically for our kids. Cause I want the kids to go bike riding without having to worry about going up and down a mountain. Uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely love it. So, uh, thanks everyone. This has been a great little tour around the state. Uh, you got it. This is the, this, what I love about this, this show that we do is, you know, we've got this beautifully broad perspective. We got Scott on Oahu, uh, and we got Dylan uh, born and raised in Hawaii, who went to the mainland, lived on Oahu, came back and now is living on the big island. We have Heidi, who's been living in Maui, an expert realtor in Maui, who's got a lot, decades of Maui experience. It's it's absolutely fabulous, and I'm so pleased to be I'm so pleased to, to be a, to be a, a part of this. Uh, and see, look, Julie, what what did Judy just say? You all have a twinkle in you in your eye when you talk about where you live. 
Yes, Judy, exactly. That is exactly correct. There is the twinkle in the eye. And that's this attitude of gratitude that we have. Hawaii is the most incredible. For those of us that have moved to Hawaii in and, and belong in Hawaii, and it's a long topic, so I'm not going to go into it. But for those of us that in uh, that are in that that sphere, those of us that have been here for a long time, uh, this is the place for us, and it is there is no place else uh, that can ever possibly substitute Hawaii, and it's just wonderful and amazing. Uh, I got a quick a, a couple of comments that came in. Um, a quick one from Paul. Um, Aloha, guys. I'm interested in a property you saw in the Puna area with unpermitted cabin built to be permitted eventually is it ill advised to bother with this i'm a builder and would finish the cabin dylan i hope paul's talking to you is he talking to you uh not not yet but we should we should talk paul um the 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 major thing to avoid here is when there is an existing structure it's not always simple to get it permitted because it depends on when it was built it could have been built to the the code at the time 10 years ago and the code changes as you know as a, as a builder uh, pretty frequently and so a lot of times people buy unpermitted stuff with the assumption that they can get it permitted and it becomes a much bigger or impossible project based on how the how the structure was constructed or it's, it becomes cost prohibitive to do it. So definitely be uh, be cautious of that um, and do some extreme amount of due diligence and work with somebody who knows what they're doing because um, just because the, seller, the, the, the seller's realtor says you can doesn't mean you can. Yeah, the moral of the story here is work with somebody who knows what, what they're doing. And you're gonna, you know, Paul, if you need to be talking to to Dylan, uh, as uh, as Raul, you need to be talking with. I don't know where we're gonna be buying Raul, but if you're if you're buying on if you're buying in this state, you better be talking with Scott or Dylan or Heidi. Uh, make sure you click on that link in, in the description to uh, contact your lender based on this great discussion that we just had about um, uh, the lending issue. And this was a. Uh, um, uh, uh, Joshua's uh, question. Uh, let's see if we kind of catch up over here at a couple of comments. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we got, yeah, Raul got, oh yeah, we have a uh, stargazer who's back. Stargazer, welcome back. Good to see you here. Uh, great to be, to have you a part of it. Uh, and uh, we have, yeah, uh, Ian uplifting Shaka. Absolutely, buddy. That is, that is what, that is what I wanted to do today. You know, I just wanted to give everybody something to, not to say an escape, but just something nice to kind of settle in on and enjoy and have a kind of a little uplifting break to be a part of the Hawaii thing here just for just for a little while longer. Uh, all right, let's let's move into let me get to the, the our little uh, diamonds and deals uh, moment. I think that's kind of where we need to be right now. Give me a quick sec. OK, here we go. Yeah, it's about that time. So uh, it, we are on uh, the the diamonds and deals part of our show. And I've asked I always ask uh, Scott and Dylan and Heidi to pull out a property that they feel is uh, aspirational, inspirational, a, a great deal as well. So we got diamonds and deals. So we're going to get started with those diamonds and deals. Let's see which one is first. Oh, Oh, yeah, I love this one. Heidi, what is this? This is a 3660 Lower Honoa Pi'ilani Road. What's with this property, Heidi? So this property, I chose this because a lot of people wonder, well, what's available on Maui for under 200000 This property is listed at 188000 It's a leasehold condo, one bedroom, one bath, um, newly remodeled, really cute unit. There's a pool. Um, you're pretty much right across the street from the beach. Um, definitely one to check out and, you know, happy to talk to anybody about leasehold. Leasehold isn't for everybody, but it does work, um, for certain people in certain situations. So happy to have that discussion if anybody has questions about it. Yeah, you know, I'm really glad this this came up because we I, I I didn't I did not plan this out. This is this is God's way of 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 making the the show fun and interesting. We had a couple of comments earlier that I flipped on the screen about the leasehold. Uh, so we don't want to get into a leasehold discussion because it's long and somewhat complicated. But very quickly on this one, Heidi, when does this lease sort of either get renegotiated or when did this lease expire on this property? Because leasehold is like leasing a car. You don't physically you don't own the property legally. You lease it. But when does this lease expire or get renegotiated, Heidi? So I believe there's another 27 years on this lease. Um, so, I mean, there's lots to look at in leasehold. I mean, you want to look at the length of the term on the lease, what the lease rent is. And generally, every 10 years, they'll have what's known as a renegotiation date where that lease rent could be adjusted. Um, so those are all things to look through um, and get all the information. 
I mean, the, the reason I find people buy leasehold is because it's just the cost to purchase it is so much less than a comparable fee simple condominium. I mean, for something like this fee simple in this neighborhood, you might be looking at 350 to 400, um, just to give you an idea. Yeah, that is a huge benefit of, of leasehold, and it, it is a great way. If the if the factors all work for you, it is definitely something to have. people. Well, people people are buying and selling leasehold properties all the time. My first property that I bought in Hawaii when I was in my early twenties was a leasehold property, and it worked out very very well for me. And I was really happy I bought it. I would no lo- no way would I be able to afford that. Um, if I, if it was a, a fee simple. And so that was great. All right, let's go on to the next one. And the next one is the Kaka Aqua condo that's on Oahu. Scott, tell us about this place. So this is one of my, one of my more f- enjoyable buildings. I love the amenities in this building and you're in Kaka Aqua, which is our up and coming community. They're planning 30 plus towers over the next roughly 10, 15 years or so. Um, so it is going to fill out. It's our hip urban core area where a lot of the hip restaurants are coming up. But Pacifica Honolulu was originally supposed to be Moana Vista. And my one of my best friends was actually the project manager for that. And that developer went under. Oliver McMillan, the San Diego developer, built this and then changed it, modified it to go more luxury right towards the end. And you can see in the lower right corner, you have a movie theater room. You have these cabanas all with fire pits. You've got an, a, a beautiful workout room, a sauna, all the amenities you could think you could want. In fact, even a chef's kitchen area where you can you can um, rent it out, so to speak, or put a deposit down, have friends over, have a private chef come over and cook meals for you and your friends. So if you like amenities, this is a good one. And it's a one bedroom in that area for six, 655,000 fee simple. Um, and the maintenance fee is almost 800 a month, which is actually right in line. Some people may think that's a lot. It's about 120 dollars, uh, I mean, a dollar 20 a square foot, which is right in line with the newer buildings are. Um, but great views, high floor, one bedroom looking out towards the ocean side, sunset side. And then you have just a ton of amenities and you could walk right out the door, right into the heart of, uh, the urban core. Yeah. That Kaka'ako, uh, region is really a big time up and coming kind of hipster, lots of new condos popping up all over the place in Kaka'ako. Those of us that have been on Oahu for a long time, every time we drive through Kaka'ako, we don't recognize it. Uh, you know, just the, only a, a few months later, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, uh, let's uh, a couple of quick comments over here before we move on to to, to Dylan. Um, uh, first of all, uh, uh, Josh uh, really appreciates all the time that we've taken to run the show for us so often. Yeah, Josh, look, it's really our pleasure. I, it's it, it really is a lot of fun. We have a good time doing it too, uh, and so it's really great. So make sure you connect with uh, with Dylan if you're going to be on the big on, but to connect with us when you're ready to get what you want. Uh, Julie has got a quick question. Hello, I'm co- uh, coming to Hawaii, considering coming to Hawaii in the next few weeks, possibly Kauai. What's it like now? Any place to look for trade opportunities or house sit or boat sit job opportunities? A lot of questions over there, Heidi. That's a that's a tough, that's beyond the, the scope of this show, but we can handle right now. All I can tell you is uh, make sure you plan. All I can talk about is the travel side. You really, really want to plan that. That's the best thing I can say. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to jump in. You could jump in on, on, on what uh, Julie uh, asked about. Uh, let's see. Uh, Alex uh, Martin says, Scott and Dylan, I'm going to Oahu March 20th through April 4th. I'll be on each island for one week. We'll be looking on both islands for a house, just one house, FYI. Alex, I need you to click on the description right now. Are, is, are, are any of you guys working with Alex now? Anyone? Scott, tell anybody. Um, Alex, you need to click on that link in the description, uh, Find help you find a house so that you can get in contact with these folks that when you'll be on those islands, you definitely do not want to be missing that. You've got experts that are waiting to, to help. Uh, I think, oh yeah, and Raul uh, mentioned the last show, work transfer got me to Oahu. Uh, Taking your advice on renting in different areas. We'll be getting in contact with Scott. All right. That's great to hear, Raul. Well, you definitely want to get a hold of Scott. All right. Um, uh, let's see. Let's move on to our uh, last diamond and deal over here. And that is Dylan blowing it out. What is this, Dylan? So this is a very interesting opportunity. So this is a diamond and potentially a deal. So this is an auction property. It's actually been on the market for a very long time. It's in a very special place, Keho Bay. If you're familiar with it, it's near where the uh, the old Kona Surf is. It's, it's, it's now a Sheraton resort, but there's really only like five or six residential properties along this bay. And so very unique. 
Uh, beautiful boat harbor on the inside of this bay, but you can see where the property is located right there. Um, super luxury, seven bedroom, seven bath, huge home. And it's going to be on auction. So it was it was uh, previously listed at 7.4 million. They're starting the auction at 150,000 with no reserve. So, and I just saw this same company do an auction for a property that one of my uh, team members had had listed. And it was listed for, I think 3.2 million and it ended up selling for 1.6. So once you commit to this, whatever the highest bid is, is what you sell your property for. So uh, this potentially could be something that you could get for significantly less than 7.4 million. And it is a just a stunner of a property, amazing location, very, very unique. So um, if you got a couple million to spend, this is something definitely to look at. I am I am speechless looking at that property. That is, I mean, the, the the photos, of course, don't do it justice, and we can't blow them up big enough to look at the resolution here. But I'm I'm looking at that that one part of on the upper left hand corner over here, Dylan. It looks like a view out of the living room, and it's just a yep. stunning a view across the bay. Right, that looks like a view off the living room across the bay, which is yep. nice. Like, looks like a resort, and of course, that big great room in the lower right hand side with all that. That looks like coal wood paneling on the uh, coal wood on the floor, or certainly some kind of native wood on the floor. Like that is that is absolutely absolutely stunning. Uh, excellent, excellent work. Very very cool. Diamonds and deals. So your it could be yours for way way less than seven point four million. You, you know, you know when you said the starting bid's one hundred fifty thousand, I kind of feel like I feel like bidding like two hundred thousand just to say I put a bid on <laughs> I think it. We right? should all put a bid in, right? <laughs> we should all put a bid just for the heck of it. You know, get the your property goes for two hundred fifty thousand. So uh, that's that's a great one. So uh, okay, let's uh, let me see here. Let me go back uh, a couple of slides and continue where we left off. Oh, we have a couple of all right. So there's a couple of uh, interesting questions over here. So the um, uh, let's see here. Let's take, oh, you know, I, I did want to hit one since we're, we're talking, wait, hold on a second. Let's do this. Let's go. Okay. We talked about, uh, hmm, we've got 52 minutes. Okay. Let's, let's do this. We have a big topic. I'm going to save it for, for next week. Uh, since this is somewhat of a, of a, of a dreamy show, a, an aspirational show for the first year. Um, let's, let's talk about this one. So we have a question from Scott from Dallas, Texas. Uh, and Scott says, uh, first, we really enjoy the Aloha Friday show. Thanks, Scott. I really enjoy it too. Uh, we learn something new each week uh, from Peter and the real estate experts. Yes, uh, so do I. Actually, Scott, I learn something new every week as well. Scott says, my wife and I are retiring in mid-2022 and we're in our early 60s and dream of moving to Maui where we have enjoyed visiting the past 35 years. We prefer a single family home, low to no maintenance and newer if possible. This will be our primary residence, but we anticipate traveling for approximately five months per year. Uh, we prefer not to exceed 1.5 million and the purchase will be a cash transaction. So Heidi, what are your thoughts on Hokulani Golf Phyllis? The floor plans, the square footage, the pricing and golf course seem to fit our wish list. Do you know of any new construction projects coming up within the next one to three years that we should put on our radar? And to everyone, we love the Hawaiian culture, people, and history. What kind of advice can you give that would allow us to be accepted into the Hawaiian community as seamlessly as possible? Various volunteering opportunities in the community and the thought church and, and through church come to mind. Are we on the right track? Great question, Scott. Heidi, how do you respond to Scott? Well, Scott, thanks so much for reaching out and for your question. Um, Hokulani Golf Villas is, is a, it's a very popular community and newer construction um, in Kihei. Um, you know, there's not a lot of new construction on Maui, but another new project that you might keep on your radar is Wailea Hills. Um, Anticipated delivery, though, on that one is, I believe, 2023. Um, so it might be just a little bit out. Um, but the uh, Lailoa is the first phase of Wailea Hills, and it's going to be on the oriented on the seventh hole of the Wailea Blue Golf Course. Um, there's 15 buildings, modern architecture. Um, it's terraced to really take advantage of the views of the outer islands and the West Maui mountains. Um, and happy to send you some more information on that, you know, as they release it and it gets developed. Um, I mean, one of the reasons Hokulani Golf Villas, I think, was really popular is because it's a condominium community where 
a lot of things are taken care of for you, but they are freestanding homes and you do have garages as well. Um, another community like that is, that comes to mind, it's about 20 years old, it was built about 20 years ago, is the vintage. Again, freestanding homes, you have a garage, but it is a condominium community where they take care of all the landscaping, um, take care of the pool, take care of everything for you. So those would be a couple couple things to think about and yeah, happy to help. Thank you, Heidi. You know, uh, just to kind of quick, uh, just to keep on this theme of, of the dream, uh, the, let's just kind of replace the title there with dream of moving to Maui and say dream to moving to, let's say, Big Island. Dylan, what would you do if, um, what would you recommend to, to Scott? He, he's looking at a price range of 1.5. Um, where would you tell Scott to to look at relatively newer construction he's looking for apparently uh, wants to be near uh, likes likes the golf course where would you where would you tell Scott to look at on the big island we, we have a ton of options in that price range so um that's definitely something you know if you don't settle on Maui you definitely want to look on the big island uh, there's many uh, communities and we do and one of the advantages of the big island is we're big so a lot of the uh these newer developments with nice new construction they do them on one acre pieces of land so you, you you don't you're not crammed into small lots and so there's makalea estates there's kona hills there's all of these different um subdivisions on the upper highway so you had a nice elevation stunning views and of course there's tons of golf courses in kona so you may not be right on one but you're 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 15 20 minutes away from from several that you can choose from so that's if you're in kona if you want to be out in the waikaloa area you're more looking there's a couple of areas where you can get a single family home, but a lot of them are more condo uh, type properties, but you'll have plenty of options in that 1.5 price range. Great views, pool, I mean, anything, everything you could want. Thanks, Dylan. Scott, let's uh, let's just kind of open up a little bit over here because Oahu is kind of different. If you had, let's let's take away the requirement of a house versus condo. So house or condo, if you had one point, <laughs> if, right? Because uh, we have to open up here. We're just dreaming, right? We're just dreaming because we know Scott wants to go to Maui, but let's just take the overall idea of someone like Scott, 1.5 on Oahu, wants something new, wants a house, would prefer a house, but condo's open too. What would you recommend? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of different... Um, uh, development projects projects that are going on. And actually, I, I happen to take a look at my phone and, and uh, Coa Ridge and Nanea just announced while we were on the show that they're going to be releasing a new seg uh, phase. So if anybody's interested, get in touch with me because they're going to start doing the uh, the lottery portion on that. But um, yeah, there's a there's a great new construction one out in Kapolei that's on the Kapolei golf course. Um, there You can also get Hoakalei. Actually, I got into a backup offer um, earlier this week on a golf course frontage in Hoakalei down in Eva, which is like the Ocean Point area, uh, 3,700 square feet. Great. And, and we're right around the 1.5 range. You can go Coco Villas, which is newer down in Hawaii Kai on the Hawaii Kai golf course. I had a client that had the premier home there right on the golf course elevated up. He had ocean and Molokai views in the distance, which is really neat. Um, or you can go Kaka'ako condo. Um, that's where most of our condo towers are going. The vertical um, kind of towers are going and that gives you just a different urban core life lifestyle. Uh, you can also be in Hawaii Kai right next to the mid pack golf course on in a single family home in that price point. So you got a ton of options in different areas. This is what I love about this team. I keep saying again, and forgive me, everyone, for for repeating myself, but it is so great to be to be with people who know what they're doing. It's it's just so it's just so awesome. All right, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up over here and and uh, end it with what we uh, what we uh, Dylan started a tradition many uh, many shows ago, uh, and that is going to be our. Our, our closing thoughts. Um, so why don't we kind of let's let's do this. Let's take it. Let, let's go Dylan, then Heidi and then Scott for our, our closing thought. We're about to wrap, wrap up our first show of, of the new year. Heidi, what's your closing thought for everybody? Well, my closing thought is um, if you're waiting for the world to be perfect, um, you're probably never going to want to make a move. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to share a quote. This is usually accredited to Mark Twain. And 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than the ones that you did. So throw off the bowl lines, sail away from safe har harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails and explore, dream and discover. Beautiful. Thank you, Heidi. That is, that is absolutely fabulous. Uh, Dylan, what's your closing thought for today? So because it's uh, New Year's and people make resolutions, and this is uh, uh, 
quote that a uh, former Navy SEAL Jocko Willick uh, uses a lot, and I really like it, and I and I use it on my kids all the time. Is that discipline equals freedom? And a lot of people think that that doesn't make sense because discipline means you have less freedom. But in his context, it's and this definitely applies to any type of New Year's resolutions or other goals that you have. Is the more discipline you have, the actually the more freedom you get because you can use it in examples like exercise. I personally apply it to exercise. I like to exercise every day because I like to eat. So exercising allows me to have the freedom to not have a strict diet and stay, still be relatively healthy or did the discipline to work hard and get up every day and, and, and uh, make money will give you financial freedom in the future. And so if you have discipline, you definitely have more freedom. And it's something to kind of think about when you look at life and approach what you're doing. Thanks, Dylan. Love it. Absolutely excellent. Scott, what's your closing thought? Uh, I'm actually going to wing it on this one. I'm going to piggyback off of what Dylan just said. He was talking about exercise or health. And, um, you know, most most people don't know this, but one of my biggest things that's most important to me is, uh, you know, without health, nothing else matters. Um, if you if you don't have good health, you it, the job isn't going to matter, nothing else. Um, and, and I've had quite a few surgeries. I played soccer in college and things. And most people don't know I've had hip surgery, shoulder surgery, a couple other things. So for me, I focus on health significantly. I also go go back to a different side of health and and gratitude, which you were speaking earlier. And I took. I, I went down to Kapiolani Park to watch the sunset uh, two nights ago to close out last year to to rid the mind, you know, just kind of relax for a little bit. And I stayed down there till probably 839 at night. And that's a part of the reason why I like living in this area is because I feel it feels completely safe even in the park in the evening time. Um, but I was able to just kind of decompress, uh, you know, get get rid of last year, refocus on this year and and move forward with new re you know, being invigorated and, and having new goals and new focus. Love it, man. Love it. Absolutely love it. And folks, if you got some closing thoughts, throw them over here. I'll do I'll do my best to kind of pop them on the screen real quick from Kinaya and then from Jeremy. Thanks uh, for looking, making a trip in April. Talk to some appraisers. Definitely, Jeremy. And uh, Aloha Friday, Melinda. Absolutely. All right, gang. My closing thought, I kind of had my opening thought was my closing thought. So I'm going to make mine really brief. I think what comes down to me is live in the moment, savor the moment. Whatever the moment is, savor the moment. If it's a wonderful, great moment, savor it. It's a great moment without any expectations about how, whether it's going to continue, whether it's going to go away or whether you're jinxing it or not, savor the moment. And if the moment is awful, if it's terrible, savor that too. It ain't going to be around forever. It'll be gone for, it'll be gone shortly. It won't be here forever. Savor that moment. Live for the now. Can't do this all the time. We do have to plan ahead to discipline the thing that Dylan mentioned in planning ahead for our finances. There's always times for that, but sometimes savor the moment, savor the moment. And if you're living in Hawaii, it's kind of easy, but no matter where you live, it doesn't matter. Savor the moment. All right, folks, I think with that, I'm going to give you all a big uh, um, uh, thanks, Mark, for the great show. We're looking at Mark as part of our cohort, which is starting. we got the the great, uh, the uh, Hawaii Islander, uh, Islander Ohana cohort, which is starting next week. I'm so excited about this. Our first cohort is going to be meeting on the next week, uh, Saturday. Um, we're going to be opening it. The cohort's closed right now, but we're going to be opening up again uh, later on. I'm so, I'm so stoked. All right, folks, I think this is it for me. Uh, I'm going to go around quick. Uh, let's go uh, clockwise. I'm from Scott and Dylan and Heidi. Aloha Friday, everybody. Have a great Aloha Friday. Aloha. Have a good weekend. Aloha. See you all, see you all later. Aloha.